my water just broke. I felt like things really intensified. She was right there and she was coming. It was, it was an amazing feeling. I'm gonna cry just thinking about it. I could feel her head. We heard her cry. We were squeezing hands and she was screaming. <laughs> I'm Bryn Hunt Palmer and you're listening to The Birth Hour. This podcast is designed as a safe place to come together and share childbirth stories. Stick around and join us to hear informative and empowering birth journeys from all over the world. Today's episode is sponsored by Needed. Pregnancy and postpartum are some of the most nutritionally demanding times in your life, and you and your baby's health, both now and for years to come, are influenced by your nutrient status. There are so many prenatals out there, it can be hard to know what's truly the best option. I love that Needed was founded by two moms who were navigating their own fertility journeys. They were shocked to realize that 97% of women take a prenatal vitamin, yet 95% have nutrient deficiencies. Fast forward and now more than 4,000 women's health experts from nutritionists to midwives, functional medicine doctors, and OBGYNs all enthusiastically choose Needed as the number one nutrition brand for perinatal and women's health supplements that support those who are trying to conceive, pregnant, postpartum, as well as before and after the perinatal years. Needed's prenatal multi is available in capsules and an easy to take vanilla powder that's perfect for nausea or those who don't love taking pills. I've been putting it in my smoothies and it's such a great flavor and a great texture as well. Additionally, Needed offers premium supplements for every stage beyond just pregnancy, from egg quality support to a lactation support plan to stress and sleep support that, let's face it, we could all benefit from, including those of us going through perimenopause or menopause. There's so much on the journey to parenthood that you can't control, but nutrition is a big one that you can. Head over to thisisneeded.com and use code BIRTHHOUR for 20% off your first month of Needed products. That's thisisneeded.com and use code BIRTHHOUR for 20% off your first month of Needed products. Okay, everyone, I have a quick announcement about our Know Your Options online childbirth course. You guys hear me talk about it at the beginning of almost every episode because I want to make sure any new listeners are aware that we have this comprehensive evidence-based online childbirth education available for you. We developed it in 2017, so it's been around for quite a while. We've had over a thousand students And we have very rarely offered this sale, but right now we're doing 50% off with the code Black Friday. You get lifetime access when you sign up for this. So if you think you're going to want it down the road, you should go ahead and take advantage of this discount now. You can go to thebirthhour.com slash course and just use that code to check out to get 50% off. You can also see everything that's included in the course there. It is 12 modules and it is packed with information from my partner, Stephanie, who is a childbirth educator, lactation counselor, birth and postpartum doula who's been to hundreds of births and is just an amazing educator that I am so happy to be partnering with on this. We also do live Zoom calls so you can get questions answered. And we have a Facebook group where you can pop your questions in at any time of the day. So again, that's the birthhour.com slash course and use the code Black Friday for 50% off. I would tell you more about it. I could go on and on about this course, but if you go to that link, you're going to see detailed information about everything included in those modules, including information about the bonus course that comes with it called Beyond the First Latch. So it's all about feeding, pumping, all those things postpartum with baby. So take a look at that, the birthhour.com slash course code Black Friday to save 50% off through the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. All right, today's birth story is with Allison, and this episode originally aired in 2019 and was a really popular episode at that time, so I hope you guys enjoy it today. It's from our archives. You can access all of our archives by becoming a Patreon member at patreon.com slash birth hour, but today Allison's going to be sharing about her experience with a planned C-section as well as what postpartum was like after that birth. All right, let's hear from Allison. Hi, Allison. Welcome to the birth hour. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, thank you. I'm so excited. Can you tell listeners a little bit about you and your family? Yeah, so my name is Allison. I live in the Twin Cities in Minnesota with my husband. We have a dog and our son is one. All right. Well, let's start with your pregnancy. How did that go? In hindsight, I feel like it was pretty uneventful, (laughs) but I remember it not feeling that way at the time. We got pregnant pretty easily. 
before we like officially started trying, I'd gone off birth control and just was like, I'm going to give it three months and I'm not going to think about it. And we're just going to see what happens. And we got pregnant the third month. This fast. Yeah. I was a little surprised because I'm very, I have anxiety. And one of the ways that I like deal with it is one, getting information and learning things, but two, also like, okay, what's the worst case scenario? Like I have to prepare that this isn't going to be super easy and fun or whatever. So it's like, okay, it could take a long time to get pregnant. Like we could be trying for a long time and that's okay. So when I started to have symptoms of being pregnant that third month, I was like, hmm, am I just excited and like hoping this is what it is? And I mean, my symptoms were pretty typical, but I will say the TMI version is that I had really weird poops for a whole week. And that was when I was like, hmm, I should take a pregnancy test just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have not heard so, that one before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just like every single morning at the same time, I don't know. I don't like need to describe anything else about them, just that they were not normal for me. And so, yeah, we took a test and... I shouldn't say we, I took a test because I'm very like, I don't want to get too excited. And I knew if I told my husband I was suspicious, he would be more like excited about it. So I took it by myself. And the first one, the line was so faint that even I wasn't really sure. I was like rubbing the test to be like, is that a smudge? Like, what is that? And so I waited two more days, which in hindsight, I'm like, how did I wait two days without just going a little crazy, but yeah, I waited impressive. two days <laughs> and took one and the line was still really faint, but I was like, no, that's a line. That's for sure a line. And I remember being in the bathroom upstairs and I like saw it and was kind of like, Hmm, like I knew it was going to be positive. I was pretty sure it was weird. I don't know. I've thought about being pregnant so much in my life. Like I knew I wanted to be a mom when I was like four. <laughs> so I've thought about it for so much of my life and then seeing it was really exciting. And I remember running downstairs to tell my husband and I can't even remember if he just was like, Whoa. And then his second comment was, it's a girl. It's just, it's a girl. I know it's a girl. (laughs) And I was like, okay, well, I guess we'll see. (laughs) That's interesting. Yeah. And he's normally not like that, like a feelings person. Like, I just feel like I know something he's very intellectual. So when he's like, I feel like it's a girl, I was like, it's based on something. I don't know what, but anyway, pregnancy was okay. First trimester, I was nauseous 24 seven, but I never threw up or anything. It just literally felt like I could at any moment all the time, day and night. Like I'd wake up in the middle of the night feeling so nauseous and nothing really made it go away. But at least I felt like I could function and go to work. So I guess it could have been worse. And probably the weirdest symptom was that my armpits got really swollen and hurt really bad first trimester. I'd never heard of that before. And my doctor said- Your armpits were swollen? Yeah. What? What? (laughs) I know. But apparently I just have like breast tissue that goes up into my armpits. And so, you know, like your boobs are tender and that was in my armpits. And I would literally put on deodorant and was like, oh my gosh, this hurts so bad. But my provider was not concerned. So I was like, all right, I guess this is, this is what's happening. And for me, second trimester was the worst. Everyone told me like, oh, you're so nauseous. It'll be fine. Second trimester is the best trimester. Yeah. And I don't know why, but I had like excruciating rib pain. I, I have no idea why. Um, I went to a chiropractor and that was one of the few things that really helped. And she just said, it's probably just the stretching, like your ribs are making space. And that's probably what the pain was, but it was awful. And that was really the only thing that helped. So there were some days where I would just cry because it was like nothing made it feel good. I was just trying to feel like I could tolerate functioning. I don't know. I thought that was such a weird, a weird thing to have, but third trimester in comparison, I felt like was great. 
I mean, I was uncomfortable for sure, but I didn't have pain. I wasn't nauseous anymore. I don't know. I just really liked their trimester. And that was the closest I got to being like, maybe I could, maybe I could be pregnant again. Cause the whole first parts, I was like, how does anyone ever do this again? This is the worst. <laughs> but, um, the only like weird thing that happened to me third trimester is that I got auras. So I've had previously gotten oral migraines. And so when I started getting the auras, I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? I don't know what to do about it. Cause usually that's how I know I'm going to get a migraine, but they never developed into migraines. I just had auras and they had me go see an eye doctor to make sure there wasn't anything weird visual happening, but my vision was fine. My eyes were fine. So they just said it was a weird pregnancy symptom, I guess. I don't know. Hmm. Well, I'm glad they yeah. didn't develop into migraines because I assume oh that gosh. would have been harder to cope with pregnant. Yeah. So what type of birth were you planning for? So from the beginning, I was very opposed to making a birth plan. Like I have preferences and things, but I was like, I want to have as natural of a birth as I can, but I just feel like I can't make a decision if I don't know how contractions are going to feel or what will be happening or how long I'll be in labor. Like I just didn't want to get too attached to any plan. So we decided to tour a birth center. And then my friend also recommended her OB who she loved. So I was like, we'll do the tour. We'll do an appointment with the OB and we'll just see what feels the best. And I was sure that I was going to pick the birth center because I don't know, that just seems more like something that I would do. And it was great. Like the birth center was great, but it was further away from our home. There was like construction nearby that like the route to the hospital from there, if there was an emergency was blocked off and it would be when I gave birth. And I, I don't know, I'm like, I'm sure nothing will go wrong, but that gave me a lot of anxiety plus the travel from our house. So I was like, well, I hope the OB is good. (laughs) We met the OB and she was so good. Like the second I met her, I just knew that I wanted to use her for my care and my birth. And it's like a mile from her house. So that was a huge bonus. But yeah, so I saw her all throughout my pregnancy. I was really excited about researching everything. I listened to all the episodes of the birth hour about vaginal births because I knew that was what I was going to have. We like, my husband and I went through the know your options course and we both listened to all the parts about vaginal births and everything with the baby was fine. We found out he was a boy at 20 weeks. So my husband was very wrong. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. that was funny to find out because he was so sure. And I didn't really have a feeling, but he was so sure that when we found out it was a boy, I was like, okay. Like I tried really hard not to picture the baby being a boy or girl, but it totally took me a little time to adjust to like, it's a boy. It's for real a boy. (laughs) So I think it was at my 35 week appointment. I was measuring about three weeks ahead. So my OB ordered an ultrasound just to check my fluid and make sure everything was okay in there. And I made them, I made them check again at that appointment to make sure it was for sure a boy because <laughs> I just had to know. <laughs> and it was still a boy. So, um, we had our appointment with my OB at, I think it was a week after that. And there were just some concerns about the baby. Frankly, if I had told this story last year, I probably would have shared like every little detail about what we found out, what was happening, my entire health history, like everything we thought about when we made a decision. But I realized that I spend a lot of time feeling like I have to justify to anyone else the decisions that we made during our pregnancy. And I don't think those details really matter. But we weighed all the options. My OB, she was so, I don't know, she was just very straightforward and honest, which I really liked. And I had an insane amount of questions. She answered all of my questions. She would bring back research if there was anything we weren't sure about. Um, Like we reviewed every possible scenario and 
Um, we ended up scheduling a C-section for the day before my due date. And it was my decision. It was not hers at all. Like we weighed all the options. We went back and forth a lot of times with my husband and with her. And I appreciated so much that I did not feel forced into it. I didn't feel like she didn't give me options or anything like that. Um, and I did really struggle with the decision at the time, but she was so good. And even up to the last minute was like, you don't have to do anything you're not comfortable with. So if you change your mind the day before or the day of, like we can do what we need to do. Like, this is not the only thing that there is, you know? So it made me feel a lot better and gave me a lot of reassurance that even if I wanted to change my mind later, I could, but we had it scheduled And I just, I don't know, I felt pretty sure about our decision, but I didn't really feel like I talked to my close friends, but I didn't really want to tell anyone else. I didn't want anyone else's judgment or, I don't know, like I, I don't feel like anyone made me feel that way. I think just like those things you subtly pick up, like I follow a lot of birth accounts and birth photographers and things like that. And sometimes you just get the impression that maybe it's not as noble to do certain things. And in hindsight, that feels ridiculous. But in the moments of feeling that and being pregnant and making the decision and struggling with it, it felt very huge to me. Um, And it just felt like our bodies are supposed to be able to do this. And if that's the like right and natural way, like why is this happening? I don't know. I'm sure Um, there's people out there that are just nodding along and can totally relate to those feelings. Yeah. And especially like, it wasn't an emergency. It wasn't like, this is the only option we have to do this right now. Like we chose a couple of weeks ahead of time. Um, but like I said, it feels so ridiculous to me now a year out, like it was the best decision for us. And especially with my OB being so supportive, it was so nice. So when we made the decision, then we went back and we listened to all the birth hour episodes about C-sections And we went through the modules in the class about C-sections. I read a ton of birth stories, articles. I like read through all the hospital policies. I asked my OB a lot of questions. (laughs) I'm sure I'm like the patient who she's like, oh my gosh, she has way too many questions. (laughs) But um, all the way up to the day before my appointment, we were good. My OB like at that appointment was like, are you sure this is what you want? Like, we need to know for sure. Just let me know if you're not sure. And it, it made me feel even more sure, I guess, in the moment. Um, but I feel like I went into it as, a, as informed as I could be. I knew all of the hospital policies. Like I wanted to have the curtain down. I wanted to do delayed cord clamping. Like those were all things that I had discussed with her in advance. So it was nice going into it that day, knowing like, whatever happened, she knew exactly what I wanted. My husband knew what we were going into. He knew what I wanted. Um, and you know, the bonus of like, we both slept a full night the night before and I didn't have a single contraction. We just rolled up to the hospital. We were showered and well rested. And (laughs) I got a pedicure the day before I knew what my last day, (laughs) I knew what my last day of work was going to be like for a type A person. It was it was a dream. (laughs) But I remember rolling up to the hospital that day and I don't know, it was just so surreal, like parking in the parking lot and knowing like the next time I come to my car, I'm going to have a baby. Like that was the most outrageous thought to me. And I remember the prep feeling like forever. It was two hours. So for everyone who actually went through labor, I'm sure you're all rolling your eyes like, oh my gosh, two hours, really? (laughs) But it really felt like so long. And I remember they made me take this shot of liquid that tasted like Skittle juice. They said it, I think was for nausea or something, but I just was like this. I didn't know that that would happen. And I just thought it was so weird taking a shot in the hospital. (laughs) But anyway, it was delayed a little bit. So we had to wait a little bit longer than we thought. And it just, I, those minutes felt so long, but then, um, I went in to get my epidural and my husband couldn't be there. And that to me was the worst part though, like waiting alone and I wasn't having contractions. So the epidural was really painful. Like 
they make you hunch over. And I just remember them putting it in and I could not even control like my whole body. Just like, I think I arched my back or I don't know what I did because it was so painful. And as soon as it was over though, it was fine. Everything kicked in. Okay. And then my husband came in and I swear it was like five minutes after we went in there that they pulled him out. It was crazy. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't believe how fast it went. And I just like, I had pictured that scenario happening so many times because I knew it was coming. We had scheduled the C-section. I don't know. I plan and prepare for everything. So I just thought like, I knew how I would feel. And when she held him up, I just was like, whoa, baby, like it could have been anyone's baby. Like I don't know why I just, I thought he'd come out. I would feel so connected and I'd see him and just be like, that's my baby. But I mean, I could see that he was attached to me. Like it was my baby. There was no weird switch, but I just felt like nothing. And that was so not how I felt or thought I would feel in that moment. Um, My husband cut the cord they suctioned him and he cried and they put him on my chest because that was what I had requested. And it just, I don't know. Again, I like imagine this whole other scenario. And part of it is just like laying flat on your back is not an ideal way to like hold a baby and see them for the first time. And he was just like all smooshed against my face and my neck and I couldn't really see him. And it just was like a cold moment. I don't know. And it kind of was getting in my head of like, I'm supposed to feel something else and I'm supposed to just, you know, have all these emotions. And it just felt really unnatural. And I started to get worried of like, oh my gosh, is something wrong with me? Like, what is this? Um, but I think I actually asked my husband because I, th- I thought that they took him off me and my husband was holding him for a while because I know we were in the OR for a while because, you know, sewing me back up and stuff took a long time. But he said I held him the whole time. So I honestly feel like that went so fast because I don't remember a lot of the details. Like I was for sure awake. Nothing weird happened. I just, I don't know. But I remember when they finally sat me up and put him on or let me hold him, I should say. They let me hold him for real. And actually like sitting and being able to see his face and like hold him felt like what I had expected everything to feel like before. Like just being able to see him and feel like a little more normal instead of laying all weird. I don't know. Thanks for sharing that. I have heard from other moms that in that position, it is hard. Like you could almost smell them more than you can see them. And you're still undergoing a major surgery. So it's understandable that there's a few things going on in your head. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, it was a lot. And I mean, in hindsight now, again, like that part was so little, but in the moment I remember feeling so terrified that like, I don't know if it was an emotional thing or I don't know. I don't know. But I bonded with my son just fine. Like we have a great relationship, but I remember being in the uh, recovery room and I was really focused on breastfeeding because I've read a lot of articles and things about how sometimes after C-sections that can be harder to initiate with your baby. And so I was just determined to work on that a lot. And it did not feel instinctual to me. Like, again, I... I think too much about things and I think I am prepared for things. And when it doesn't go that way, sometimes it can, it can be really difficult because it's like, isn't this supposed to be like an instinct? Like, aren't we as mothers supposed to just know how all of that works and just figure it out? And I know that's not how it really is, but then in the moment it feels like I should know this. This should be easier. You know, we were sitting in the room. I was holding him. I know that he was on there. Like I could feel him sucking. And I was looking at him. I was talking to my husband. And all of a sudden the nurse came in and like rushed over and started like patting him. And I was so confused what was happening. And she was like, oh my gosh, he's not breathing. And I literally was looking at him. Like I was holding him in my arms and I had no idea. And she said he looked blue, which 
newborns are super weird colored when they come out. Like it's not like they're a little purpley and a little red and it doesn't look super natural at the beginning. So I hadn't really noticed a difference. And I swear I felt him sucking. And I mean, he perked up right away and he was totally fine. But again, in the moment, I just was like, I am a total failure as a mother. Like who doesn't notice that he was a foot from my face. Like I should have noticed. And it was something that I struggled with for a really long time after it happened. Like I told one or two people that that happened because I was so ashamed. Like, like somehow I maliciously suffocated my baby on my boob. Like that is completely ridiculous, but I just didn't know what to do and everything was fine. The nurse was there. Like nothing happened to him. He was never like in real distress. He was never taken away to, you know, be dealt with or resuscitated or anything like that. It was not that serious, but for months after he was born, anytime anything slightly off happened, I was like, it's my fault. It's because I suffocated him and he went without oxygen too long and now he's going to have problems and it's going to be my fault. And I, it took me a long time to talk about it and to like come to terms with the reality because in reality, it was a small thing. It was never that serious. Like he is perfect. Well, he's perfect. He's average. He's just like everyone else's baby. <laughs> And to me, he's perfect. You know, like he doesn't have any problems from it. I just was so scared and would have blamed myself if anything had happened after that. And I don't know, it really threw me off. But other than that little blip, when we got transferred to our room, like breastfeeding actually went okay. Um, I mean, it was hard to get going, but he figured it out before we left the hospital. I was able to breastfeed and we were able to bond and everything else was fine. It all worked out. I remember in the hospital too, the nurses were really focused on putting him in the, what are those things called? The <laughs> um, oh, cradle thing that yeah. wheels around next to you. I don't know yeah. what it's called either. <laughs> Bassinet maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll go but with like, that. Yeah. Every single time they came in the room, they're like, well, don't you want to put him down? And I was like, no, I don't want to put him down. Like I wanted him to be skin to skin with me. I wanted to be breastfeeding as much as I could. And they were like really insistent. And I remember one time I finally was like, fine, just put him in there. (laughs) The second they left the room, I put him, I picked him back up and held him. But that was the only thing at the hospital that I just was like, what, why, why do you want him to be in there so bad? Like, I don't, it's fine if I'm going to the bathroom or like I need a break, but I didn't feel like I needed that. And I just thought that was a weird thing. Um, but anyway, that was pretty much our hospital stay. And I just remember coming home and that felt like such a relief to me. Like I didn't hate being in the hospital, but I've always kind of been like, like, I'm not a dainty lady. I don't need people wait. Like, helping me with everything and being all over me. Like I like my own space. I like to do what I can. And it just felt so good coming home and being in our own house. And I was relieved to leave. I know a lot of people with their first babies are like wanting more help. And I'm like, no, leave me alone. I want to go home. Um, But yeah, everything went really well. I was so concerned, especially after our little incident in the hospital was super worried about postpartum depression and anxiety. Like at baseline, I have anxiety. So I kind of thought that would just happen no matter what. Cause of course, if I already start with some anxiety, I'm going to have a crazy amount more afterwards. But I remember my hormones being crazy and so hormonal, like all the time. But I just remember it was, I cried a lot, but it was always like, oh my gosh, he's so perfect. I have a baby. My life is the best. Oh my gosh. Like I'm up all night and I should probably just be tired and cranky, but the hormones to me felt like happiness. And that was something I did not prepare for. Like I had read a hundred things and done everything I could to prepare, but I hadn't really 
thought about the good parts. Like I hadn't thought about how happy I would be and how joyful being a mom would be. And so that's kind of how, how it was for me. And I'm glad that I was able to, to get there and not just be in my head about all the other possibilities and how it could have been and all of that. So anyway, I guess that's my story. My son just turned one and I can't believe it. (laughs) (laughs) Keeping, keeping a human alive for that long is not a joke. That first year is a lot. Yeah. I feel like the first birthday is definitely more about celebrating (laughs) surviving as the parents (laughs) than yeah, the baby actually caring that he's one. (laughs) Right. He did love the cake, but other than that, it was pretty, uh, (laughs) anticlimactic. <laughs> All right. Well, do you have, um, any favorite resources you want to share things that helped you? Totally. So we did the know your options course and both my husband and I loved it. I, I felt like I was quite prepared before we did the course. Cause I've done birth photography for my friends. Like a lot of my friends have kids and I'm the friend who's like, tell me all the gross stuff that happened. Like, I want to know everything. And I still feel like I learned so much through the course. And it was really nice for my husband to feel like he was a part of it and knew what was going on, especially when we scheduled the C-section for him to like understand what would be happening and the things that we wanted to advocate for. And he would like come to my appointments and like throw out some terminology to impress my OB. (laughs) We appreciated it so much. (laughs) And um, especially it being online was so nice for us because after working a long day or a long week, like we did not want to go to in-person classes and have to spend a half day doing an intense class. Like we watched the modules like one at a time. So it was like half an hour every other night or whatever. And that worked so well for us. So I really can't say enough good things about the course. So for any new listeners that are wondering what we're talking about, this is the birth hours, know your options childbirth course that's Mm -hmm. online. And you were in our first batch of students. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been out for almost two years now, which is crazy, but you can get information on the website for that. And I'll put um, info in the show notes page as well. Yes. And I will especially say being able to go back and review things was nice because like I said, we had watched all the vaginal birth ones. And I mean, if we had gone to a real class and I just was like, oh, I don't need the other information. (laughs) Like it would have been over. But since we had the online class, like we went back and re-listened to some sections and listened to the C-section ones. So it was really nice to still have access to all that information. Um. And then my husband and I actually read this book together. It's called How Not to Hate Your Husband After Kids. Um, The author is Jancy Dunn, I think. And that I cannot recommend that book enough to anyone. Like you don't have to be straight or married. Um, It's just about being in a relationship and how things change when you have kids and It was so funny and so relatable and we both loved that book and I genuinely recommend it to everyone I know and I feel like it helped so much with adjusting to parenthood and just talking about things before it happens. It it helped us a ton. Um, Such a funny title. (laughs) Yeah. I'm glad that the book's good. (laughs) It's really good and if you can read it together, all the better. Um, and then I loved Ina Mae Gaskin's Guide to Childbirth. It did not apply to my birth, but I loved all of the positive birth stories in there. And I really leaned on that at the beginning of my pregnancy. And I also recommend that to anyone. I'm sure that's been mentioned a thousand times in this podcast, but, um, and then the other thing, which is not really a, a book or a resource, but I, for fellow C-section moms, Um, Google C-section scar massage, because that is something that I learned about accidentally on Instagram. And I swear by it, my scar is like barely noticeable and it's something you can do at home once your scar heals. So throwing that out there. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing all those. We'll put them on the show notes page. And then did you want to share where people can connect with you? 
Sure. So I'm on Instagram and my handle is Allison Wonder and Allison is spelled A-L-L-Y-S-O-N. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Yeah, thank you. And now we're going to chat with Julie from Needed, today's sponsor, all about their vitamins and supplements that are so great for all different stages. All right, let's get to that chat with Julie. Hi, Julie. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today to chat with me about Needed. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, we've been sharing about Needed for a couple months now, and I'm excited to kind of dive deeper into the products you guys offer. But before we get to that, can you share with listeners just a little bit about you and your role at Needed? Yeah, sure. So I am the co-founder and co-CEO of Needed. Um, I started Needed with my business school classmate and friend, Ryan. Um, And day-to-day, I oversee marketing for us, and Ryan oversees our product development and operations side of the business. But yeah, I am a mom of two girls. I live in LA and that's where Ryan lives as well. But our team um, is mostly moms and we are located all throughout the country. I love it. Sounds like the perfect business to kick off when you have two little ones. (laughs) Absolutely. All right. So tell us a little bit about how the company got started and what your goals were with creating it. Yeah. So Ryan and I met um, when we were in business school and And both of us were trained nutritionists and obsessed lifelong nutrition nerds. Um, Neither of us were (laughs) practicing nutritionists um, at the time, but we were really the most health conscious among our friends. And we were both really shocked to discover through nutritional testing that we had massive nutrient deficiencies. And both of us had multiple nutrient deficiencies, like five Mm. to 10 each. And they were both in like a critical deficiency stage. And that was really surprising to us because we were doing what we thought were all of the right things, like shopping at the farmer's market and preparing our own food and taking supplements. So we dove into the research and discovered that we were not alone in having these needs. Over 95% of women have nutrient deficiencies. And that's despite 97% of women in this life stage, the perinatal stage, taking a prenatal vitamin. So that was a real aha moment for us. Um, and at the same time, many of our friends were starting their fertility pregnancy or postpartum journeys. And a lot of them were struggling with, you know, the day to days of, um, of, finding a prenatal, and then also on the other side, some real complications of pregnancy or difficulty with feeling their best or difficulty conceiving. And it was shocking how much of an afterthought nutrition was. We knew from our nutritional training that nutrition can be so supportive of a healthy pregnancy, conception, postpartum, really all facets of a mom and baby's health. But nutrition wasn't being used in a therapeutic way. It was like, just take a prenatal vitamin. They're all the same. It doesn't really matter which one you take. And that just isn't true. So that was the aha moment that led us to decide to redesign the prenatal vitamin and the other products that women need from the ground up. And that is really important because most products on the market aren't custom formulated. They're really just a copy of what's easily available, something called whitelisting, which basically means that a product is produced in a stock way and then brands are just putting their own branding on top of them. And that's that's how we got to the place that we're at now where most prenatal vitamins aren't meeting women's needs. And we really wanted to be the solution to that, which meant custom formulating our products. Mm-hmm. And to do so, we work closely with perinatal nutrition and health practitioners that are regularly testing women's nutrient and hormone levels in this life stage to know what is optimal and what's needed. That's how we landed on the company name because we were really trying to help women meet their needs in an optimal way, not just meet the bare minimums. Right. Yeah, I love that. And I love that the website is thisisneeded.com. Okay, so then let's let's focus on you have a lot of different products and plans that can be catered to different stages. But I think a great place to start is the complete plan. So let's talk a little bit about that. And especially I'm interested in the choice to have a powder for the prenatal multi versus a capsule. Yeah. So the first products that we launched in 2020 um, make up our complete plan. It's a four-part protocol that includes a prenatal vitamin, an omega-3, 
a pre and probiotic, and a collagen protein. We included all four because they really are the foundational products that meet your micronutrient, microbiome, and macronutrient needs. Uh, Protein is such an important component of a healthy pregnancy to support blood pressure, blood sugar regulation, and then postpartum for um, for healing, collagen protein is um, really uniquely suited to do so. And what I didn't realize until I was in this life stage is that um, one of the amino acids in collagen, glycine, is um, conditionally essential in pregnancy, meaning your body can't produce it on its own. It needs to consume it through food. And the placenta is actually made up of collagen. So we're not including it just for the skin and gut health benefits that collagen is known for, but really for this foundational need that um, that women have in this life stage. Um, and to answer your question around powder, we started with a powder prenatal because of a few reasons. One is that a lot of women struggle to take capsules, especially in pregnancy. And if you have any form of nausea or indigestion, that can be even more difficult. But also with a powder, we are able to dose nutrients in their optimal form and in dosages that are really meaningful. It's it's kind of a space constraint to fit everything that you need in a prenatal into one or two pills a day or a handful of gummies. It's just not possible, especially for some of the most critical nutrients like choline. It's a really bulky nutrient. And so what you see most commonly is that prenatal vitamins don't include it or they dose it at a really small amount that isn't meaningful. And we wanted Mm -hmm. to dose at the optimal levels and in optimal forms that your body can readily use and and put put to work. And the powdered form was really an optimal way to be able to deliver that. Um, We now offer our prenatal vitamin in three different forms, though. We have a powder, we have a capsule form, and we have what we call our essentials, which is a pared-down version of our capsule prenatal for times when you just can't take more than a couple pills a day. So it's perfect for first trimester nausea or for some women who have um, nausea all throughout their pregnancy. Our essentials version is a really popular choice. Right, because to your point, to getting enough of what you need of those nutrients for the the main capsule option, it's eight capsules a day, which feels like a lot probably to some people. A lot of women will break it up. They'll take like two or three in the morning and then a few more with lunch and a few more before bedtime. So that divided dosing can be a good way to get in all eight capsules in a day. But I personally really like having the flexibility to switch between powder and capsules. Sometimes if I make a smoothie in the morning, I like to take my powder, but on days where I don't make a smoothie or where, you know, I'm just in the mood for capsules instead, or having something different for breakfast than a smoothie, it's nice to be able to take the capsules and you can actually take a half a dose of each to divide it up. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility between the options. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. I know when I was pregnant, I struggled with my iron levels. And so I was always trying to really put a lot of spinach in my smoothie in the morning. And it would have been so great to be able to just add in my prenatal and feel like I was accomplishing this big thing first thing every day. Totally. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned iron. Iron is a really interesting nutrient. It's, it's a nutrient that many women will need in pregnancy, but not throughout the entire stage. Um, Mm. Some women need more than others. Our bodies are unique. And so we actually offer iron as a separate add-on, not as an ingredient in our prenatal vitamin because iron and calcium compete for absorption in the body. You want both, but you want to take them at different times of day. And for those who are really prone to nausea, iron can make nausea worse. So it's helpful to be able to take it right before you go to bed instead of having, you know, having it in your prenatal vitamin and, you know, that making you nauseous when you take it first thing in the day. So our iron is a really popular add on. And in general, we're building products that work together in a system so that you can customize your routine to meet your needs. The complete plan, those four products are the core, but We have other targeted nutrient add-ons like our iron. We also offer a targeted choline add-on and a vitamin D for times when you need more of those nutrients. And then we also have products that meet specific um, needs like sleep support and stress support and hydration support. And our latest product, which I'm super excited about, our immune support, which is a product that you can take during pregnancy, postpartum, but you can also give it to your kids. 
Um, and for those who are listening, who are moms, uh, many of us are very familiar with the fact that kids get sick on average six to to 12 times per year. And if you have more kids at home, you typically have more sick days. Um, there's some really interesting research around what fraction of the year your household has some form of a virus and it, it goes up and up and up with each kid. So I love our immune sports an elderberry flavored powder that has prebiotics, postbiotics, zinc, and elderberry, and it tastes amazing. And that's a really good example of the way we're thinking about designing products that really meet your needs. We want to be the brand that can support women all throughout this journey from fertility, through pregnancy, through postpartum, through maybe considering having more kids in the future and growing with our consumer as she becomes a mom and goes through the next stages of her life. Yeah. And everything is just so clearly laid out on the website. I just really encourage everyone to go check it out because it's very easy to navigate. Everything is clearly labeled as to when you might need things, whether it's vegan or vegetarian. Um, I just really love what you guys have put together as far as the user experience as well. And I've personally tried several of the products and everything, especially the powders I've tried have been really tasty. The sleep one I've been loving that has magnesium in it, right? Yeah. Magnesium, L-theanine, chamomile, and glycine. All of them are really supportive of relaxation and sleep. And and most importantly, there's no melatonin in it. You don't have any of that next day Mm -hmm. sluggishness that you can get with some sleep products. And it's uh, pregnancy safe, which is amazing for if you are dealing with pregnancy insomnia, which I certainly did with both of my pregnancies. Yes, I would have loved to have had that as like a little nightcap (laughs) during pregnancy. It's also awesome when you're, you know, when I, I personally, when I was, you know, doing night feedings, um, I felt like I could fall asleep at the drop of a pin, but it was awesome for my husband to be able to take. Cause he didn't have those like mm. hormonal, you know, sleepiness that happens when you're breastfeeding or, or pumping and you have the oxytocin release, which can make you really drowsy. So he loved taking it in those early newborn days to be able to fall back asleep after being woken up at night by, um, by a hungry baby. <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably be like hoarding it. <laughs> from my husband, but I'm sure you have plenty in your house. (laughs) That is one benefit of uh, of being the founder of the company. We're always stocked up. Yes. All right. Well, any final words or things you want to highlight? Maybe it was just one other thing. We've been talking a lot about the products that needed offers, which we're really proud to be recommended by practitioners. We have over 3,000 practitioners that recommend our products. But the other huge part of our mission is to help empower women and educate them. So much of this journey is overwhelming and it can be so difficult to know what nutrition you need at what stage. And oftentimes we hear that women aren't, aren't getting enough of that information from their OBIA visits or sometimes from their midwife visits as well. And so we're really building through our practitioner collective, we're building an educational resource via our website, via our social media, where you can come and get expert information about meeting your needs through nutrition and through other things in this life stage, like making decisions about where to birth or decisions about uh, what kind of postpartum care you need. So I would really encourage listeners um, to check out those educational resources. One that I'll just mention that's a free resource that we're really happy to be able to provide is the most comprehensive review of prenatal vitamins. There are a lot of prenatals on the market. And through our practitioner community, we've reviewed over 75 of the leading ones. So if you have questions about the prenatal vitamin that you're taking or a couple that you're considering, you can check out that resource via our website, thisisneeded.com and download it and talk to your practitioner about it. Or if you have any follow-up questions, you can always reach out to our team. Our customer support team is amazing and and it's staffed by trained perinatal nutritionists. So we really have that expert level of information throughout all aspects of our company. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, I know many of our listeners are very into evidence-based information and are, you know, big research nerds. So that sounds like a great resource. Um, Yeah. So again, people just head over to thisisneeded.com and we do have a coupon code right now. It's birth hour for 20% off, which I will be sure to link to where you're listening to this podcast and also on the website. Thank you so much, Julie, for your time today. It was so great chatting with you. Thank you for having me as a longtime listener. It's really a pleasure to be able to work with you. 
Thank you so much again to Allison for sharing her story with us and to Needed for sponsoring this episode. If you want more information from today's episode, just head over to thebirthhour.com and search for Allison's name in the search bar. We'll also link to the childbirth course with that coupon code Black Friday for 50% off. And I'll put that in the podcast app as well. It's thebirthhour.com slash course. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, head to thebirthhour.com and click become a member to pledge your support. And as a thank you, you'll get an invitation to join our private Facebook group and access to exclusive episodes. Your vote of confidence and support means the world to me.